<laughs> it's very normal and honestly I think if anything it has been a source of inspiration and pride he never fails to fight he files he fights for progress he fights for liberty for justice and for equality if they did oh, so, oh sorry <laughs> so those people that think they know my father should know that he will never be silenced by blackmail and intimidation he lost his position once you know he was suspended from CBN and I remember I don't know if you remember the famous quotes where he said you can suspend a man but you can never suspend the truth and one of so one of his favorite quotes is from the meditations of Marcus Aurelius whenever confronted with a choice between what is right and what is popular you must always do the right thing he taught us and I know he does not mind being the most unpopular emir so long as he speaks the truth as for the throne he always says it is God who gives power and only God takes it away when God says your time is up it is up and before then no one can do anything about it I'm sure my dad would love to remain an emir for the rest of his life after all it was all he wanted to be but I know he will not at all cost I remember my first year at the African Leadership Academy he got an award he was given um, the mine of integrity and to me that was when integrity started having a meaning you know it's doing the right thing no matter the consequences so I know that if my father has to choose between the throne and his conscience he will happily give up the throne He has already accomplished his ambition of succeeding his forefathers and frankly is the same person I knew as a banker and as a central bank governor. As an emir he has not changed and will be the same person even as an ex uh, even as an ex emir if it comes to that. But he will not be silenced that much I know. And we as a family are all behind him and whether or not he's whether or not he's in the arena. This is our battle to fight and we are determined to win not just his immediate family I mean all of us. I stand here as a human because everyone every human must stand up and fight the atrocities we are facing my father has already given you the data the facts are there so how is it okay for us to be comfortable knowing the situation of most of us are we delusional or just silent sure we can all do what we can to help organizations and movements like BBOG which are doing amazing work fighting for human rights but our leaders who are supposedly responsible for us what are they doing our policy everything that's supposed to protect us how come it's just destroying us now this might just spark another controversy and I'm sure it could easily be interpreted but I truly do wonder how we can keep fighting Boko Haram when we truly are making our homes the homes of the average northern Nigerian almost as unbearable as those of the victims we deprive of we deprive them of education we marry them off early we don't protect them this is not even on a society level I mean even at home family the husbands in fact the fathers that should protect our women don't always they they have kids young they get exposed to diseases they get divorced they're left on streets because husbands don't want them anymore and fathers already got, got rid of them I can't tell you the pe people that come to my father every day like in the council just looking for help there are women on the streets all the time their children that their parents can't take care of you know they have kids and I remember we all got offended when mrs. patients called us the Almadjuris of the North but to be honest if we stop and think about it I mean isn't that what we really are we have children and we send them off to streets we don't give them food we don't give them education we just leave them there so we whenever people talk about the North whenever we criticize the North we get attacked and then they say we have forgotten history okay sure we do have great history but are we always going to live in the glory of our past or do are we going to start having ambitions for our future maybe this is again the new mother in me but I think of my daughter and I want her to be better than me and I think that as a country we wants the next generations to be better than us but it's so sad and it's so unfortunate that 
when I think of Nigeria and I want to speak of its glory, I only talk about it in the past because there really isn't much to glorify at the present. So what are we? We're the same North that lost girls that we still haven't retrieved three years later. The same North that's averaging over 70% in poverty. Worst of all, the same North that doesn't want to do anything about it. We blame our people. They do all this to themselves. But the government and so-called people in charge, people responsible, don't they have obligations? So the girl isn't in school. Everyone is okay with us pointing fingers at the parents for not educating her. But some families truly want to send their girls to school. But there are no schools for poor people. There are no hospitals for poor people. You get lucky, say you escape all that, you, you, you got the education, you got married when you wanted, when you were old enough to who you wanted, but then you have problems at your workplace. Maybe you don't even get a job. And there's a problem we're facing because equality is making sure that when a man and a woman apply for a job, they all have 50% chances of getting it. So I think I would conclude now, because I'm taking too much time. But I want to thank you all for making this happen. And I hope that we will all be inspired to be proactive. I'll leave you with a quote that my sister, it's like her favorite quote from Benjamin Franklin. It says, justice will not be served until those unaffected as outraged as those that are. Thank you very much. That was Shahida Sanusi, the daughter of the Emir of Kanu, His Highness Lamido Sanusi. Now her presentation is historic, as this is the first time a non-titled holder is representing the Emir of Kanu, and it's more poignant as she is a woman. She spoke about the dangers of not educating the girl child. What a fortunate princess she is to have a father who's so strong in mentorship. And that's why, you know, when we talk a lot about girl-child education, I mean, it's not just something that women need to fight for. It's also something that men must support. And you have the greatest support, one of the strongest support ever. A daughter come and ably represent her father. It takes courage to read that father's speech. If I were the one, maybe I would have edited it. <laughs> but well done, our princess, well done. Well, she did talk about, you know, the parents, the pain of the Chibok parents. I remember once on Sunrise Daily, the program I anchor almost every morning with my colleagues, talking about, you know, waiting. Then very few of the girls had returned, and I think it was just the ones who had come back by themselves that had come back. The Bring Back Our Girls movement had the slogan, something about hope, keeping hope alive. It was a very strong statement. It was something that I could not fully comprehend. And I asked, how do you sell hope? How do you keep hope alive to parents who are waiting, who are wondering, when will my daughter return? How do they keep that hope alive? But they were right. Not too long after, some 24 girls, is it 20 girls, 21 girls were returned, were rescued or negotiated for, if you prefer. And at least it looked like there was light at the end of the tunnel. But can you imagine how it must be for those parents wondering, will my daughter be among the 24 or 21 that were returned? Will they be among? And then the disappointment when your daughter is not there. This morning, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to listen to the testimony of one of the Chibok parents, Sarah Samuel. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rebecca Samuel. I can't continue speaking in, in English. I will speak in Hausa. Welcome to Warhaka. Shekara Uku Emata Muyosun Chika. 
ba kwana uku bane shekara uku